this is my first museum, any kind of exhibition, basically. I wasn't preparing for anything. It just hit me like a flatbed truck. It took me a long time before I was willing to think that maybe I was an artist, but I've been making work for a long time, for almost 30 years at this point. I remember when it first came to my mind when I was making something, not necessarily that I was an artist, but that maybe I was finally becoming myself when I was making the pots, instead of making work that was like other people's. It was a, a moment that was really wonderful and I knew that it was right but people have to be when they're making things they have to be really honest with themselves and fairly rigorous ask all the time is this who I am is this what I'm doing honest is it expressive have other people done it already all kinds of things like that so it has to do with just really looking hard and it, it took me a long time I also don't like to think highly of myself I like to just think I'm like anybody else, and so to use the term artist was difficult for me because it seemed potentially inflated. As human beings, we're humans, but we're also vessels. All the things that happen to us from our inner experiences and then the things that affect us from our lives, happiness, joy, pain, illness, heartbreak, um, aging, youth, flowering, pregnancy, uh, failure, collapse, all those things started to really reflect themselves in the pots. All the things that were happening to me started getting expressed. And for instance, if I had a bad day, something might collapse. And I was interested in seeing how something could be beautiful even though it had holes or was collapsed or spikes. Uh, a lot of things in nature inspire me. The burls on trees, the barnacles on the pilings that are outside the ferry terminal. Um, how do I get that texture? The little spikes on a Japanese cucumber or the way that a bird moves or a person smiles or a heart is broken or... These are all the things that inspire me. I love imperfection. Things that don't have bumps or spikes or tears or holes or are... That's Ken and Barbie. That's... And Kardashian. That's not interesting and I, I can't imagine being friends or or loving people that didn't have imperfections. And as we age, all kinds of things happen to us that we at first think, oh gosh, I'm losing this, or I'm not that anymore, or there's so much regret, and I just think, no, that's, wait a minute, that's, that's just who we are. The process for my ceramics is, except for one pot in this show, they're all coil built, which is a pre-wheel thrown technique uh, of taking long snakes of, of clay and piling them up on top of each other, smearing them together, and then scraping things and smoothing it and manipulating it into all kinds of shapes, whatever you want. The stitch drawings evolved from a series of jackets and vests that I was quilting with a, an, a fairly ancient stitch from Japan, which is a long-running stitch called sashiko stitch. And I, at one point, noticed that I liked the shape of the pattern of one of the things that I was getting ready to cut out again. Did a drawing, a silhouette of that pattern, uh, using the sashiko stitch as the drawing element on the same kind of fabric that I was making the clothes out of, and then started looking around at other things uh, that were just normal objects that we might overlook uh, for their silhouettes and whether their silhouettes were interesting. The embroideries for the Valentines for my husband evolved from 
my learning embroidery as a little kid. I lived in a French boarding school in Cannes, France for two years and as a six-year-old learned how to embroider and I just never stopped. So that was a way of showing that I also know old school embroidery. I like not only to make things, but I like to have them be functional so that I live in a world that to some extent is very satisfying because I use and wear and produce things that other people can enjoy in their daily lives and these things have all evolved from it. The first of the collapsed pieces was at the beginning of the pandemic when it seemed like everything was kind of getting turned upside down. They all start vertically. Collapsing some of them seemed to, to me to be helping me understand where other things were collapsing also, and then still getting back up, or still looking beautiful one way or the other. There was uh, one that I did after my sister died, which was about her death. It didn't make it through the firing, so it's not part of the show, but it helped me to understand that some of these can represent different kinds of feelings that we go through at a difficult time, but that we still are surviving. What I've learned from my art from this exhibition is it always had to do with thinking about other people and what we go through, how we experience our lives and how internally and externally our lives are affected by all the forces that we go through, good and bad, and how we can be beautiful in spite of all of us being transformed in some ways that take us off the perfection path. And what I've learned from all of this is that other people connect with this in ways that are profoundly amazing to me, that this means so much to other people. I never would have thought that that could happen from my making these things. <laughs> <laughs>